Right now could be a once in a decade opportunity to buy a lot of beaten down growth stocks at great prices for a bull market run over the next decade. I have a couple I want to talk about that I think are absolutely worth buying right now. There's another one that I want to talk about that I think is worth avoiding, maybe even selling if you own. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. Before we get into those stocks, just want to remind everybody we get to make these videos because of our partnership with The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, go to our link, fool.com forward slash The Smattering. Fool's going to give you their 10 best stocks to buy right now. Okay, let's kick this off with a stock that I think is absolutely worth buying right now, and that's CrowdStrike. The stock at recent prices is about half of its 52-week high. Now, here's the thing. That 52-week high, I'm not going to lie, was probably a stretch valuation. So it makes sense that the stock has come down a lot. But this is one of those rare companies that I think is worth buying and owning because of the strength of its business, the importance of what it provides, and the kind of cash flows per share growth it can generate to investors. So what is CrowdStrike? It's one of the leading cybersecurity companies. It provides a distributed SaaS solution for endpoint protection. What does all that mumbo jumbo mean? In short, it's pushed antivirus software off of the local device, pushed it out to the cloud, and made it far faster to update and protect endpoint devices from a data breach. As a result, George Kurtz has taken this idea and delivered returns for investors. Cash flow per share has absolutely skyrocketed and is likely to continue to grow. Now, this isn't a cheap stock. It trades for about 13 times sales. That is expensive, but the economics of this business, the cash flow per share and growth of that cash flow per share metric are absolutely wonderful. And I think 13 times sales is worth paying for CrowdStrike. All right, let's talk about the next stock, and that's SoFi Technologies. So SoFi, a fintech company that's also become a bank. We're also moving a little higher up the risk ladder. And why is that the case? Because SoFi, now the bank, has kind of changed the way its balance sheet structured and changed where it sits in the leverage profile of risk. Banks are very leveraged. They basically lend out $90 for every $100 in deposits. And that means they have to execute really well on high quality loans, keep their defaults low, or things can get ugly really fast. So for SoFi, the reason that's particularly important to look at is by far the biggest part of their loan portfolio are unsecured personal loans. These are the highest level of risk. There's not an asset like with a mortgage where you can repossess a house or a car loan. You have a car that's backing up that mortgage. They're completely secured by the credit rating of the, of the person that you lent the money to. Now, that makes them more risky, particularly if we do see recession. The economic data looks good that we're probably going to be okay broadly, but we could have some troubles. And if we do, that could be risky for SoFi's portfolio. But I think if you look at their growth rates, you look at the cash flows, all of the other revenue sources they have from their fintech product to all of their ease-based services that they offer to retail customers, there's a tremendous amount to like about SoFi as long as you kind of temper your expectations and consider that there is the risk based on its loan portfolio. Lastly, I want to talk about a stock that's down a lot, ChargePoint Holdings. The stock is down around 40% or so from its high. And there's a lot of things that seem really attractive about ChargePoint. After all, you look at the growth rates of electric vehicles, they're, you're talking like 50% compounded annual growth rates over the next five to 10 years. That sounds really exciting if you're looking at a company like ChargePoint, that provides charging solutions. Here's the challenge and why I think Char ChargePoint is a stock that I would avoid. If I owned it, I would probably be selling it right now. And that's that the charging solutions business is already very commoditized and likely to grow increasingly so. It's going to be really hard to make a great living because the value chain is structured in such a way that if you're making cars, you want to provide this service to as many people as possible, and you want it to be based on technology that you have some ability to control. On the other end of that, you have the most valuable part of the, of the value chain, and that's the real estate. That's the location of where people are going to be charging. Things like offices, if you're driving to work, things like gas stations that exist today, service stations, fast food restaurants, places where people might be stopping when they're traveling already. Those are the places that have the most valuable part in the economic value chain. I think it's going to be really challenging as the industry continues to expand for ChargePoint or any of the other companies that it competes with 
to really establish a durable competitive advantage that's going to generate strong cash flows per share for investors. And that's the thing. If you look over the long term, that's the thing that makes you money. That's the thing that makes your stock price go up when companies can do that. And I think it's really going to be hard for ChargePoint and any of its competitors in the charging space to put it all together again. I think it is a great opportunity right now to be looking at growth stocks. A lot are still beaten down. Two at the top of my list right now. Again, CrowdStrike and SoFi, I think, are worth buying right now. And again, I think ChargePoint and all of its other competitors and peers in the EV charging industry are probably best avoided right now.